Welcome back. Another episode of the New Orleans Dot Football Podcast presented by PJ's Coffee, coming to you from the Oshner Health Podcast Studio out here in Irvine, California, where we've been watching Camp Now for 11 days. We got a lot of great insights to share with you guys on this show, but you don't have to wait for the shows. You can get them right on our website, New Orleans Dot Football. Use the code CAMP24 to save 20% on your first payment. It's only 9 bucks a month. You hit that code, you get it for $720. A year price is $89. Use that 20%. Get locked in for the whole season for about $70 for the whole entire year. You get all of our articles, all of our analysis, all of our podcasts, the live tapings of the podcast, the members-only podcast. You're going to get our post-game videos all season long right after the game from the field where the Saints are playing. Everybody else is going to have to wait until a day later. And best of all, you get to join our community of great Saints fans. You can talk to them. You can talk to us. You can ask questions for the overtime segment. So use that code CAMP24. Get locked in for the whole entire season. And the other thing you should get locked into is a new car for my guy, Matt Bowers. Check out one of his mini dealerships through the Gulf Coast region. He has all different types of cars. Any type of car you want, he can get you. And he can get you the best prices, the best customer care, and the best car buying experience that you will ever have. So go check out Matt at one of his mini locations today. Right after this quick break, We're going to talk about Spencer Rattler and how excited the Saints should be about him going into his career. That's going to be our lead topic on today's show. So stick with us right after this quick word from our sponsors. Oshner Health inspires healthier lives and stronger communities through a combination of standard setting expertise, quality, and connection not found anywhere else in the region. To learn more about how Oshner empowers people to get well and stay well, visit oshner.org. Long live you. The New Orleans Dot Football Show is proudly presented by PJ's Coffee. PJ's Coffee has some of the best drinks that you can find. They have locations all over the city. They have pastries and everything else you need to get your day started. So go check them out. Choose your lucky symbol. Play beginner's luck. Win up to $5,000. Let's talk about bingo. Play talk about bingo. Win up to $50,000. Looking to triple your cash? Play triple seven seven seven. Top prize of one hundred and seventy seven thousand seven hundred and seventy seven dollars. Play the new August games from the lottery. Looking for the best insurance coverage at the lowest price? Look no further than Shaw Bear Insurance, the Earhart Agency. They are a local independent insurance agency right here in New Orleans, specializing in home, flood, and auto insurance. Their agents are born and raised in the area and understand our community's unique needs and the homeowner's insurance crisis our residents are currently in. At Shop Air Insurance, the Air Hair Agency, their dedicated team will shop every available carrier in the market, ensuring you get the most comprehensive coverage at the lowest possible price. They know your time is valuable, which is why they work diligently to provide you with the quotes as soon as possible. Why settle for less when you can have the best? Trust Shop Air Insurance, the Air Hair Agency, to protect what matters most to you. I do. I've been a client of theirs since 2021. When we couldn't find someone to insure our house because of the big oak tree growing over top, Shaw Bear worked until they found someone that would work with us and give us the protection that we need to feel safe in our new home. Call them today at 504-326-6526 or visit them online at Protected by Shaw Bear. That's 504-326-6526. Shaw Bear Insurance, the Earhart Agency, your local insurance experts. Hard Hide Punch Tool Strawberry Whiskey is an 86 proof blend of aged wheat bourbon, American light whiskey, and fresh Punch Tool strawberries. Blended in New Orleans, it is not for the thin skinned. Look for it in your favorite stores, bars, and restaurants. New Orleans Stop Football is proud to be sponsored by Firehouse Subs. Make sure you check out their location on Veterans Boulevard. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome to the Oshner Health Podcast Studio here in Irvine, California. Today's first topic brought to you by Shaba Insurance, the Air Art Agency. Since our last show, we've seen Spencer Rattler go on basically a heater just across the last couple of practices. Today, he had all the reps at the twos and threes. What do we see from him? What do we like? He looks good, man. He went 15 and 18 today, and one of the three misses was a drop. So... He was 15 of 17, basically, through a whole practice. Kind of hard to be better than that. Two days ago, it was 7 of 8 in team drills, 2 of 3 and 7 on 7s. The day in between was a little bit up and down, but I think more ups and downs throughout it. I mean, 
his progress throughout this camp, I, I think it's been it's been evident. Like it's hard to miss, and I think he just keeps getting better and better and better and better. And what have we seen? I'm I'm excited about yeah. what we've seen. I mean, does that mean he he's gonna push to be the starter this year? Absolutely not. Like, does it mean he's gonna be? You know, it just means he's having a great camp. We need to see it in the game. But I think everything you would want to see. From any rookie quarterback, like he is checking every single box. Like there is not a lot of like a lot of variance to his performances. Granted, he's not going against the first team defense. So you aren't like getting that type of evaluation that you might from somebody being drafted to be a starter this year. But he's he's doing the stuff he needs to do. I'm excited. I am legitimately excited about the stuff we're seeing in these practices. It sounds like clickbait to me. I don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe you. No, I mean, it's so funny. I mean, we can talk about Mason Tipton. We can talk about Mason Tipton like this with no repercussions. We can yeah. be like, oh, oh, I almost cursed. Oh, look, this guy we never heard of, yeah. undrafted rookie receiver from Yale, is out here killing it. Now he's working with the ones. Now, oh, he's making a catch every day in practice. Mm -hmm. But you have to like temper your enthusiasm for the fifth round draft pick because you don't want to overhype Spencer Rattler. But yeah, it's everything you want to see in this setting. Like the mm -hmm. thing that I like about him is. Um, I mean, I almost feel like my unofficial notes where sometimes I put stars and sometimes I put all caps, it, the word rollout is almost always on. <laughs> like, I feel like he makes better throws on the run than he yeah. makes, even, or looks even more comfortable on the run than in the pocket. But it's just that none of it has looked too big for him. You know, today he had a really hefty workload because Jay Kaner, uh, as scheduled, missed one day of practice. He's supposed to be back Wednesday. But that meant that he got 18 pass attempts today. Um some live situations. Dennis Allen said they had him in a fourth and five situation. Went to see how he reacted. He threw a great pass downfield in that. Mm -hmm. um, he did good with the clock down to a minute. Just, you know, he, he it doesn't look like it's too big for him. But, yeah, of course. I mean, even if they had drafted him in the second round instead of the fifth round, I wouldn't expect, like, you know, I would expect the highs and lows. Dennis Allen was very tempered in, you know, Sometimes we want to see him, you know, show that kind of confidence. Sometimes we want to see him rein it back. I'm sure there are little things he's not doing right about hitting his mark or hitting the receiver he was supposed to hit at a certain point in the regression. But the comfort level and the talent are are plain to the eye. I think all Saints fans should be excited that they drafted a guy who has enticing talent. Young quarterbacks haven't come through this building very often with enticing talent. Yeah, he, he had a pass today that was super late to, to Callaway, um, you know, and that's something that's got to get cleaned up. But, I mean... And some of the stuff he's doing it is crazy. One of those plays you, you talked about him being on the move, like it, it was a play uh, to Cedric Wilson up the sideline, and you know he's starting on the the left side of the field. Progression, progression, nothing keeps going, starts rolling out. Mm -hmm. Third progression, fourth hits Wilson up the sideline. Like that's a big time play, man. Like that's a lot of uh, ability. You mentioned the the out route to Mason Tipton on fourth five. I mean, an amazing throw. Like I think it was from the the far hash, like across the field to him. Like it was a great throw. Like. There is stuff he can do with his arm that just other guys cannot do. Like, I, I, I don't, there's a lot more that goes into playing quarterback than just the arm. I, I don't think it's a stretch to say, I, I think it would be a fallacy to not say, like, he has the best arm, I think, in, in this camp. Like, his arm talent is second to none. You, most people in the league, like, he's probably upper tier. Like, he his arm is that good. It's, it's other stuff. I think in college, like, sometimes it was, like, the speed of the decisions. It feels like we're seeing faster decisions in this offense. And one of the things about this offense is that, it's supposed to create fast, quick, easy reads for the quarterback. So maybe that's something that helps. But again, these are all things we need to see in a game. Yeah, like it's easy to be, mm -hmm. it's easy to make a quick decision in practice. It's easy to make the the right throws in practice. It's easy to to not make mistakes when you aren't actually getting hit and stuff like that. So we need to see the factor fiction going into the preseason. But I mean, I, like I said, everything you want to see with this player, it, it's been it's been good. And like his camp would be good if he was a first round pick you know, cycling in right now. It doesn't matter, fifth round, first round. Like, going to 15 to 18 in a practice is going 15 to 18 in a practice. Like, that's good. Going seven to eight with four touchdowns, that's good. It doesn't matter. Like, he is just, he's playing great right now with him, what he's being asked to do. Um, you know, fact or fiction, Jay Kaner last year kind of was having an outrageous camp himself. He goes into the preseason and it, it kind of dried up a little bit on him. So Spencer needs to make sure that doesn't happen to him. Um, but man, it, it's it's something to be excited about right now. I think no question. No, nah, it definitely is. I, I kind of see it kind of like cooking. Like he has the ingredients there between his skill set and the comfortability in this offense to have something special. It just needs time to simmer in the pot and cultivate and grow along with you know the rest of this team in this new system and scheme. I feel like under Derek, he can learn things that 
you know, somebody with 10 plus years of experience in the league can teach a quarterback like that. And I think, you know, the circumstances weren't ideal for why Jake wasn't out there today, but Spencer was able to be out there, make mistakes and then stay in to fix those mistakes. So I think I think it's the arrows are pointing up. I definitely yeah, he, think that was and that's the up. thing like he couldn't be in a better situation like he's in a situation where really nothing's going to be asked for him this year whether he's quarterback two quarterback three whatever like he can just sit here and learn and get better and then come back next year we see him at camp see where it's at and you know who knows what he's going to be ready to do then but like this is the best spot for him i mean the, there's there's no there's no pressure on him their car is going to be the starter start to finish he should be mm-hmm. And, and just for the and narrative, looks good too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just for the narrative out there of like, no, nobody's pushing anybody. Like, yeah. it's not even clo- it's not even a consideration. He's like, pushing I, hater. I mean, yeah. that's what's happened. I mean, we, we the last time we talked on Friday, you had started to come around on Rattler, and I was still hater slightly ahead. And it's been three straight practices of of his three best practices. I, yeah. I honestly think. I mean, I don't know how you can gauge something like that, but um, um, and Seven, now all eight, of a sudden, fifteen, eighteen. That's how <laughs> yeah, you gauge. Yeah, I mean. It. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know if they were like I don't know if his three best practices were really the last three practices, but it, at least two of them were without question. Um, but yeah, so now all of a sudden, like we've talked about Hainer versus Rattler, Rattler versus Hainer a lot. He is quickly push at, but yeah, no, we are not having a a QB one discussion. And again, got to see it in the game. Like yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if he if he wilts up in a game, none of this matters. Like no. that's the context of it. Um, but yeah, look, there's no competition with Derek Carr. Derek yeah. Carr's not being challenged. And that isn't like a they're protecting him thing. Like, no, he's he's looked really good in this offense. He's he's held his spot. He's performing well against a great defense in these camp practices. Again, got to see it in the games. Like, it doesn't matter. But like, there is no there is no quarterback competition here. It's a competition for quarterback, too. You got to work on your clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to wrap it up. For sure. (laughs) Let's get into our next segment presented by Aaron Rose. The unofficial depth chart came out about two hours ago. Kind of what stood out? What stood out? All right. So there's a couple of things that stood out. Let me let me get it up here on my side. The very first thing I saw is as usual, there a lot of times seniority rules on these things. So there's some where you're like, well, that obviously isn't true. It's seniority based. So I think sometimes what stands out is when somebody has already superseded seniority. Like like they they've already done away with the formality and they've <laughs> already moved a guy ahead sometimes stands out to me. So the main thing that stands out to me here is we, we got it up on the screen. Okay. So I mm-hmm. think that whoever did the defense depth chart gave us the real depth chart. And I think whoever gave us the offense depth chart did not <laughs> give us the real depth chart. Um the one on defense looks honest to me. It looks like what we, we've we seen as I go through it and I read it. I don't really see anything that I would be able to to change myself. I was a little bit surprised to see Jordan Howden um, is safety one because like, it seems like Jonathan Abrams been getting those snaps ahead of him. But just in practice today, in, in my notes, I noted that Howden was, was the first team starter today. Uh, that was the first time we've seen that in the walkthrough. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he might be – he might legitimately be in that spot. And if he's not, he was in the mix for it. But everything here – looks as it should to me now there's the or between carl granderson and uh chase young and i think that you know in the base defense when they come out there cam probably is left defensive end in that situation and it probably is a competition between carl granderson and chase young on first and ten on first and ten yeah yeah Yeah. so that looks real from what we've seen i think we both agree that cameron jordan will probably be third and snaps among those three guys but i i guess that is not unfair to list it that way um um, my first thought was that's just being deferential to Cam Jordan, but but that is that is fair. This same thing with Brian Brzee being with the backups and Shepard and Saunders being the easy way out of that is to say, well, this is what it'll look like on first when 10. they start on first mm-hmm. and ten. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, look, there's a reality where if like Peyton Turner's healthy the whole season, Cam might be fourth in defensive end snaps, and, yeah. and, and you know he's going to get snaps inside, so maybe not snaps over the all, but defensive end snaps. He he might be well behind everybody else. Offensively, like there's a lot here that I don't think is what we're seeing. Let's start like the highlight, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest bluff on here. Taysom Hill is at his quarterback. He's taking two quarterback <laughs> snaps the whole entire camp, Facts. and there's just there's just no he's not. But you got to put him somewhere. Um, you know what's funny with Taysom Hill? Not to interrupt, but uh, I I like type up the injury report every day, and I'm like missing to, uh, and veteran rest for like <laughs> linebacker demario davis Taysom hill and like i can't yeah. even i think i'd yeah. go fullback 
I call them football players sometimes. Like just because <laughs> it's like, like I'm not even trying to be funny. It's just football player. Fullback's probably the way to do it, though. Fullback's probably like if you had to put a label on them, that's what he should be. He probably should be listed there. They kind of just threw him on somewhere. End. I guess I mean, he still works sc- out with the tight ends. They're going to screw fantasy owners like by by keeping them listed as a quarterback the whole entire season. I saw ESPN had him at tight end, so that is my top fantasy advice: draft him as a tight end. All right, all right, all right. That's <laughs> but good. you're right. That is that is the biggest misnomer on here. your uh, your job. Which one stands out to you? What's your what's your next thing on on offense? Well, that looks crazy. Um, that looks crazy on offense. I mean, that is that is one spot where where I saw. All right, they're making him earn it. Mason Tipton is listed as a one, two, yep. three, four, fifth string receiver, and they have two separate receiver spots. So that means they have him at best as the ninth receiver on the team. That is absolutely not what we're seeing in practice. They have Bob Means higher, Equinemius St. Brown higher, Stanley Morgan Jr. higher. No, Mason Tipton, ignore that. He has earned more. Um, and then on the flip side, I noted I think it's weird that they have Kool Aid McKinstry listed with the second team because well, I'm telling you, I think he's a rookie who is not getting those snaps. They're in real life, they're making Kool Aid McKinstry be with the third unit. I mean, it's the second unit for now, but Marshawn Lattimore and Paul Snadibo are out, and Shamar Jean Charles and Ray John Wright are are getting the starting snaps. Kool Aid McKinstry in real life is not getting the preferential well, treatment he got on the depth chart. It goes back to my last point. I think whoever signed off on this told the truth on defense and whoever signed off out on an offense but i'm did surprised not the that they approach. put kool-aid with the twos well i think a different person probably yeah. signed off on the defensive one and yeah. a different person probably signed off on the offensive one yeah but i mean i'm saying we haven't seen kool-aid mckinstry get get there yet so so that's a little that's bit interesting i mean to me, yeah because they're they're playing the other guys ahead of him every day they're making him earn his stripes on the field um Whereas the last, like, the yeah. last couple of days, I guess. I mean, yeah. the last couple of days. But I think that's probably more about wanting to get him slot snaps. It, yeah. And they're, they're doing the nickel package. And I think, you know, I think that's probably, they probably want him to be a little bit more focused on that. I, but I you're know. right. You're right. It's pretty honest. Um, I don't see anything that's dishonest. I mean, they have Lucas Patrick listed as left guard. It would be really dishonest to keep Nick Saldaveri there after he, what, he practiced for two days before he gets hurt. Like, but, like, they didn't drop Christian Boyd behind Jack Heflin just right. for the sake of it. And it feels like they kind of did some of that on the offensive side. You're right. Um, mm-hmm. Um, Kyle Hergel being listed second. I mean, that's a guy that I think has a has a chance. I mean, that that's something that stands out. But like, they got him ahead of you know a, a guy that kind of came here off the street mid camp. So you kind of see that offensively a little bit. Um, yeah, like you said, Mason Tipton's kind of a, a, a crazy listing to me. Um, they list Hayner as two and Rattler as three instead I mean, of an or. I mean, I they didn't do the though. or thing anywhere on offense. Yeah. I think that's probably how it's going to be going into the first yeah. preseason yep. game. They're going to play it like that. I think they're going to play. I think every time you ask somebody about Spencer, it's going to be like he's great, but he's great, but like they're going to mm. they're going to do their best to keep him, you know, humble and, and make sure he's not believing in it. Dallin Holker being behind Michael Jacobson right. was was absolutely insane to me. That's not that's not <laughs> that's not even close to what we've been seeing. Like Jacobson's been getting like third team reps. Yeah. Uh, Holker's way up, but I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Overall, it's not bad. Overall, it's not super misleading. Oh, Lucas Patrick. I yeah, mean, I like, him, like yeah. they just, yeah, they Salivari just buried. Like, yeah, because yeah. I, I said that would be a lie if they kept Salivari yeah. there because he hasn't practiced oh, since bad. the second day. Yeah. Um, um, now, Lucas Patrick is still fighting for that job with Udo, with Landon Young sometimes. Um, but, you know, he's got, he feels like he's almost got a stranglehold on it right now. Is AT Perry wide receiver three? He's listed as a two on here. I mean, but no, I mean, but no, if you yeah. count both of the, yeah, I think, I think technically speaking, he would be wide receiver. I three. mean, I'd, I'd call Cedric Wilson wide receiver three, and I thought yeah. he's had a couple of nice practices yeah, I think, since he came yeah, back from. I the think injury. Cedric would be ahead of him too. Yeah, yeah. and Tipton, and then Tipton four. I mean, if they went into a game today, those are I think the, the four active receivers would be <laughs> uh, Alave, Shahid, Wilson, Tipton. I mean, nobody needs a like. 18 needs to show he's a gamer or something yeah. like yeah mm-hmm. if he he can do it like if you're showing up for the game school do whatever in these practices who who gives a damn but like he he needs to i i don't think anyone needs like the pressure might be highest on him going into this game i think yeah. jordan mims still listed yeah, behind kendra sure. miller yeah. i mean if if the outside possibility that kendra practices in the next couple of days he's before then but besides that A.T. Perry definitely yeah. has yep. a ton of bricks on his back to show up. We'll do, uh, we'll do the pressure ranking uh, before the game. Yeah, yep. yeah, for sure. Another thing, I mean, I know he's a better blocker, but in terms of athletic ability, Horvath being 
being second behind Prentice at fullback. They, they flip-flopped it back this week, though. Yeah, so, I know. So I don't know. I, I don't mean, know if it's because he missed because of those personal days and he lost work in the system or, or yeah. what. But, yeah, I did see that switch happen. You know who else? You know a guy on here that I kind of like, like a, a possibility? Like, Samson Nakua, man. Like if he, <laughs> he's killing He's, like, good in these yeah. practices. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah I think he had his first drop. Yeah, his first drop. Yeah, outside oh, of yeah. that, he's, like... Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah. again, got to do it in the games. But, like, it's kind of, like, came on off the streets and, like, immediately. Mm -hmm. Like, immediately shining. Like, he's, mm -hmm. he's looking the so The only hard. problem is, just like Shahid and Alave and Tipton, he's he's a slight frame, too. Like, yeah. it's all their yeah. best receivers. So Taller, but similar. still, yeah, yeah, still yeah. you know, yep. a more slender frame. Well, now it's time for our money segment presented by Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union. The player on this list who nobody even remotely questions out of a lot of them, Chris Olave. Yeah. Chris Olave, he had a great day of camp today. He had six of his 10 completions during the team period, and Derek Carr just kept hitting him and hitting him and hitting him. So kind of where do we see Olave's development? Mike, you had a story about how he's, you know, put a little bit of size yeah. on him. Kind of what did you say? The thing that stood out to me about that story is, uh, I hope everyone reads it, go on New Orleans Stuff Football and read it. Um, it's one of the more, like, insightful things that we've gotten talking to Matt Ray, talking to Olave and some of his family members who are out here, is I think people maybe roll their eyes at the training camp story about the guy who added six pounds of muscle. Like, okay, yeah, I see that headline all the way. The thing that stood out to me most about that was that Chris Olave started on this plan to add that in January. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he uh, Matt Ray said, I don't think he took two weeks off. Uh, he stayed in New Orleans the entire off season, um, even though we know how beautiful it is out here in Southern California. He was working in Kenner. He put a gym in his garage in Kenner. He was going to the Saints facility, and he was doing it for five months nonstop. He said he's gotten serious about not skipping any meals. He used to skip meals. He's gotten serious about not taking a day off. Uh, Matt Ray said the the soreness in his body he goes. He calls it migrating soreness. His chest would hurt one day. His legs would hurt one day. He said it was real work. He said we put him through the ringer, and and Olave wanted to do that. So yes, last offseason he also talked about getting stronger and working with resistance bands. This year he was like, how do I go all in? And and um, you know he's listed at. 187 i think he's up to 195 now mm -hmm. um you know it's not going to turn him into michael thomas but it just shows his commitment to he also talked about i know i know the clock i know about the clock we all know there's a clock and and he's like if if i want to be the same player then i'll do the same things but he wants to be in that upper echelon so he's got a real chance to do it i think with that mentality combined with that talent yeah, and, and he gave y'all a great descriptor of the story, but he still left some meat on the bone. So make sure that you subscribe to New Orleans Football to read the full thing. Nick, how do you think Olave can take this next step? I mean, I, I think he just is. Like, even, even if he doesn't make more contested catches or do more after the catch, like, just we've talked about it a hundred times, like, just being consistent, like, just being consistent, not having the lull, not having the the getting on the same page with Derek Carr aspect of it, that's going to smooth it out. He's going to play better. I mean, all that stuff, though. But, like, he, he I think he's carrying himself um, with a little bit more edge, too. Like, there's there's an urgency to kind of the, the, the stuff he's doing right now. Um, I You know, I have total belief in him going into the next season. I, I think he's going to be the backbone of this team. I think he has to be the backbone of the team. If he doesn't take the next step, I think they're in trouble because, like, if we flash back to that depth chart, like there aren't a lot of playmakers on it, and he has to he has to be he has to be elite for this yeah. to work. Like yeah. I don't think this offense works if if you're putting too much on on Derek Carr. Like Chris has to be that, and I think he will be that. I think he wants to challenge. I think he wants to be the best player in the league. Um, will he be? You know, I mean, you know, Tyree Kill is a, a big bar to meet, but I you know I think he 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 wants to be one of them guys, and I think he can be. I think he has the talent. Um, it's just going to take, you know, some of the dirty work, though. And I think that's what's going to define a season. Is he willing to make the contested catches? Is he willing to take more hits after the catch? Is he willing to block? If he's willing to do those three things and he has that mentality, adding six pounds of muscle, I think, helps with all three of them. If he's willing to do them, I think his game goes to the next level. It's, I think I get the impression he's willing. The second question is, will he be effective doing it and, and stay on the field for every down doing it and hold up to that rigor? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like if you're blocking, you're blocking – six foot tall, uh, 180 pound defensive back. So like, if you have the want to, I think you can do yep. it. Like, it's not like he's going to be out there blocking, you know, the Mario Davis. So like, it is, as long as he's willing to engage. And that was the thing in college, like you'd watch him block in college and like, he wasn't always, you know, there wasn't always the biggest embracement of that aspect of the game. But 
I think he knows that, you know, if you do it, there's a payoff. If you do it, there's a play action play down the field and you can make a big play and okay, you got to, you know, do something you don't want to do over here and, and embrace it with, with your full heart and you get the payoff, you know, maybe, you know, every week, every other week, like a shot down the field. So th there's a payoff to it. I think he'll do it. I think he'll be into it. I, they need him to be into it. Speaking of dirty work, us at New Orleans Football, we do the dirty work every day when it comes to training camp coverage. So if you're not signed up, make sure you're signed up because we cover every aspect of it. We're going to hit a quick break. You're going to hear a word from our sponsors. And when you come back, we'll continue to analyze day 11 of training camp. Keep it locked to New Orleans Football. Total Maintenance is one of the largest locally owned home and commercial service providers in South Louisiana. They were founded in 1980 and served the greater New Orleans and Baton Rouge markets. And Total Maintenance wants to show some love to our NOF listeners. They have a membership program that gets you two tune-up visits for AC and heating, as well as club membership discounts of 15% on all repairs, half off of all diagnostic charges, and three-year warranties on most repairs for membership clients. This is usually priced at the low price of $24.95 a month per system, but if you tell Total Maintenance that you found them through NOF, they'll lower the price to $20.95 per month per system for as long as you keep the membership active. It will never increase. Total Maintenance has a tune-up special running this summer for $79, down from the normal price of $179. This is a one-time offer for one system only. They also offer a free diagnostic on second opinions on units deemed to be unrepairable. And they offer free estimates for replacements as well as commercial maintenance programs. Services include AC and heating service and replacement, electrical service, plumbing service, as well as generator service and installation. They are total maintenance. Find them at tm-ac.com or give them a call at 504-841-3300 or if you're in the Baton Rouge area, 225-480-1000. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and much, much more. They are family owned and operated since 1946 and specialize in wine, spirits, gourmet food, gift baskets, catering, and tasting events. They have many locations, so they're never too far away. You can check them out in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, and Baton Rouge. Or if it's more convenient, you can always shop online. Whether you're a wine novice or a seasoned collector, you'll enjoy the Martin Wine and Spirit experience. Shrimp Rumelog combos are back at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Zesty shrimp Rumelog served with fried shrimp, catfish, or soft shell crab starting at $10.99. Or try one of our spring specials, catfish Lafitte, or lemon caperfish with crab meat. Now at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. There's nothing quite like the feeling of stepping into your dream home. At Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union, we can help make that dream a reality with a team dedicated to you. When you partner with Jefferson Financial, you do so for the life of the loan. Having a single point of contact when questions arise is invaluable. Our experts are here to guide you every step of the way. There's no better time to invest in your future. Apply online at jeffersonfinancial.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing lender. Whether you are a local New Orleanian or a fan in town for the game, get your pre- and post-game fired up at Aaron Rose. Local chaos and local love for the black and gold. Wake up and live with daily drink specials. Mimosas, screwdrivers, Bloody Marys, and hot or frozen Irish coffees. All just $3 or $4 between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Aaron Rose, half a block from Bourbon Street in the French Quarter, 811 Conti Street. Welcome back to the Oshner Health Podcast Studio here in Irvine, California. It is now time for our next segment presented by New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. The offense, they put together the great three-day stretch that we knew kind of going into this that they can put together, but they've put it on full display. Nick, you wrote an article this week detailing how the defense needs to get a little more pass rush on the line. Kind of talk about that a little bit. And then on top of that, where have we seen this team change from two weeks ago? to now i feel good about the defensive line in in the sense that we're, we're measuring it relative to our uh concerns coming in into camp I, I i don't think there's any scenario where they're worse than they were a year ago like a lot of guys would have to get hurt for it to fall off to that point and like last year's version of brian brzee is going to be better than this year's version christian boyd's a, a better i think is going to be a better player than whatever they had at, at defensive tackle for even well last Malcolm Roach before he got yeah, hurt yeah that, i take, that, I take yeah. boyd boyd over that um brzee's going to be a better version of himself carl granderson's yep. going to be the same i think there's a a willingness to use cam jordan in different roles that's going to allow them to get a little bit more out of cam if foskey or peyton turner either one of them gives you x amount of games like they're going to be better there Chase Young, I, I think, is the absolute real deal. Carl Granderson's going to remain the same. So 
I, I think I, I would, I would, you know, if you're asking me to stake something on, on either one of these groups, I mean, that is the group that I'm willing to put a stake on. I, I'm not willing to bet anything on this offensive line. A couple good days isn't changing my my view of it. Like I, I need to see like battle tested, and we'll see on that. I, the defensive line, though. I don't see a scenario where they can be worse. Offensive line, I still see a scenario where they can be worse than they were. Though I think there are a couple decent little positive signs, especially from, what was it, three days ago when it was kind of like Meltdown City about them. Yep. It's definitely looked three a little bit better. Three good practices in a row for the offensive yeah, line. Yeah, one of them without pads. So. Yeah. Uh, the defensive line is absolutely, though, the answer to the, like, what do I feel better about than I did two weeks ago? It doesn't mean that they're the best thing about the team. No. But I just feel better about him. I mean, who, there's not a guy in that top five that you don't feel better about. I mean, mm -hmm. Chase Young has been probably the the one thing I feel most better about this team since we showed up here two weeks ago in California, like seeing him. Um, I think Dennis Allen had a great line where he said, like, even if he's not refined, even if he's not perfect, he's disruptive. That's going to help everybody. And if he's even more than that, even better, um, feel – Better about Peyton Turner, feel the same about Carl Granderson, still making plays. I feel better about Isaiah Foskey, feel better about Christian Boyd. You know, Brian Brzee looks good. So, yeah, everybody's taking a little step up. So, I agree. How could they be worse? I mean, the only other candidate for an area of this team I feel better about is, is the linebacker depth. Um, but I say that while knowing that DeMario Davis is missing time with a hamstring injury, which is super concerning if he's going to fall off at all. But Pete Werner, Willie Gay, the backups playing there. So really the whole front seven on the defense is probably the most positive arrow up aspect of the team. I don't make a wild statement, but I think they could cover it. Like for, you know, not, not you don't want it a whole season there yeah. ready to move on or anything. You don't want it a whole season. But like if you told me that, that you know, season starts tomorrow and DeMario's out two weeks, yeah. I, I would kind of, I would get on here and be like, look, like, they had good range during camp. Like Willie Gay and Pete Werner both can cover a lot of ground. They probably aren't going to be as sound. They're probably isn't going to be as good at blitzing ability. But like I think they can find a way to get through it. Like I, I would say that right. and I would believe it wholeheartedly. Um You wouldn't say the linebackers have improved though, but you could say they could survive it, basically. They could survive, yeah. Well, I think the group as a whole well, no, not right. without I'm saying oh, without oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. No, 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 yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, not, yeah, definitely yeah, not yeah, yeah. definitely not improved. But <laughs> right. but I mean as is a group, I think they could piece it together. Yeah, and, and the linebacker out. depth was a concern at the beginning of this offseason. Like like well, they addressed it like wholeheartedly they addressed yeah. it and and now it's a, it feels like a strike the best thing about it is that they got two guys on the team that i think are going to probably keep two guys that they added off like hudson depending on the numbers hudson's six to me right now ford seven mm -hmm. i mean so yeah uh demarco jackson and, and anthony orgy i think are the guys yep. that are ahead right now for me yeah those are the names that are being spoken every day when it comes to well now they're with the first team because of the injuries on there but i think that position is really the direction I would go in because of the depth. But two points. You said on the defensive line that Carl Granderson is about the same, which I think he is. But I think with the addition of Chase Young, I think we spoke on this a little bit yeah, the other day. Makes a lot of sense. With the addition of Chase Young, plus the ability to get pressure inside from Brzee, now Christian Boyd and things like that, it's going to make Grandison better because he's not yeah. going to be the really focal point. point of focus. You can so walk gonna, into a couple sacks, yeah. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll, he'll be able to make it happen on the weaker side of the line. It, you know, depending on where they put the protection at. But another thing, not specific, specifically an entire position group, but I think at running back with Kendra taking his step back due to injury, I think sometimes we get lost in the sauce of like, oh, well, he's injured again. Injuries are real. There, there's stuff that you have to go through. But Jordan Mims has taken full advantage of these opportunities, and he's propelled himself up as the third option at running back unquestionably. And he can come in even sometimes because he does a little bit of things better speed wise than Jamal Williams. So I think running back, you know, with Alvin here and a mix between Jamal and Jordan, they can get some things done. If you get some version of Kendra back, it's a huge plus. Yeah. Um if Kendra was always going to be a zero and you get Mims and you add them, you're better than you were coming into it without yeah. Mims. So yeah, I yeah. I don't disagree with that per se. It's it's Kendra being injured is like such a bummer. But yeah, within the context of it, like if whatever is going to happen with the Kendra was was inevitable, like yeah. one way or the other, coming back and being good or being out, yeah, yeah, yeah. the the emergence of Mims is definitely something that makes that position. Better. Yeah, yeah. But now let's go to the flip side presented by Hard High Poncho Tula Strawberry Whiskey. What are we lower on? I mean, 
I think I, I, running backs is part of my answer for that. I mean, it's just playmakers in general. Running back got so thin since Kendra Miller doesn't look like he's going to be part of the explosion, at least early in the season. Wide receiver, it's it's Olave and, and, and Shahid and Prey. I mean, Mason Tibson's exciting, but you didn't want him to be wide receiver three and <laughs> – you know the uh, you know is is Dallin Holker and Foster Moreau battling for tight end one right now until Jawan Johnson gets back. It's just th- that's that's an area that is just a little bit more alarming. Seeing eleven straight practices for yeah. two and a half hours each, how thin they are at those positions. Yeah, I mean, again, I think I think it's how you define kind of if Kendra was just. If Kendra was going to show up and get hurt, regardless, like the emergence of Mims is 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 an sure. exciting is an exciting sure. thing for this team. I, I think he's legitimately like a solid okay. a solid player. Um, lower on overall, I don't know that I'm lower on anything overall. Like maybe maybe wide receiver, maybe wide receiver. I think I'd go with you on wide wide receiver. Um, you know, I think I'm just kind of in the same place on the offensive line. I'm waiting to find out. I'm, I'm same on the offensive line because yeah. I was down pretty low already. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just don't. I don't know yet. Um, and I don't think I'm like I've said. I think I said it on a couple shows ago. Like I, I don't think I'm going to know until we're into the season and we see it for multiple weeks, one way or another. So I don't know that a lot of stuff has moved for me. Um, I do feel like I'm, you know, outside of offensive line. I'm most worried about wide receiver. Uh, I'll, I'll throw two more possibilities at you. Um, I thought. The cornerback death couldn't couldn't like was was maybe the strength of the team, and then we see a few practices with Adebo and uh, Lattimore out. Alante Taylor's been one of the best players in camp, um, but Kool Aid McKinstry it looks like that he's going to take longer to develop than to like burst onto the scene and be an instant uh, guy. And Ugo Mati's having a down kick. Like all of a sudden, I'm like, ooh, they're thinner at corner than I thought. I mean, it, we're we're out here at practice watching Ray John Wright and Shamar Jean Charles, and um, you know they're they're down to their their backups at all those spots. So, so, but that's mostly injury related. If Marshawn and Adiba were out there, I wouldn't be concerned at all. I, I've seen, I feel like I've seen McKinstry warts on the inside. I don't feel like I've seen a lot of McKinstry warts on the outside. Okay. I mean, if, you, if you're pulling two out, I mean, it's going to look bad anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, I mean, but uh, yeah, I mean, were, were we hoping Kool-Aid would come in and be a, like a world beater? And I was kind of, I, I think maybe I was assuming he, he would burst onto the scene and he hasn't. So I'll give you that one, but I, I don't know if I'm like, I don't know if down's the right word. I, no, think it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's probably more of like a neutral, a neutral. Well, if you throw A.T. Perry in there, who we didn't mention with the receivers, I, I think I think if you had asked us in sometime after the draft, May, A.T. Perry, Kendra Miller, and Kool-Aid McKinstry are probably three of the guys we would have been most excited yeah. to see in camp, and none of those guys has done a thing in camp. Nick Saldaveri you could throw in there too, a guy who's going to potentially be a second-year starter. So all these first- and second-year guys that, that were supposed to boost – haven't necessarily showed another one that I'll put. It's a very minor one, and it's probably being hard on him. I mean, he went eight for ten today, and it felt like a bad day. But Blake Groupie, um, I wanted yeah. to see him just put a stranglehold mm-hmm. on the kicker battle, and now I'm I'm That's wondering if they're looking at the the veterans who might get cut in other camps at kicker because it's it's not solidified yet. Maybe maybe I, I really had a lot of faith in Groupie, and he's made me go back to being like, oh, he's unproven. Yeah, I mean, two sh- shows ago, I said he, he was somebody I felt confident about, and like yeah. my confidence is rocked right now. <laughs> he missed so, three field goals yeah. the next day, missed two today. Yeah, mm-hmm. my field, my, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, my take on, so down. I'm yeah. down on that one. There you go. Now, a, a contributor to the positions that we're down on is <laughs> this long injury list. I'm going to go through these names right here. Uh, stick around we're for a little need while. Another <laughs> yeah, stick around for a little round. Added to the list today, Ugo Amadi, Chandler Brewer. Chandler Brewer was a new offensive lineman that they bought in within the last couple of days. Still sidelined. Marshawn Lattimore with a hip flexor. Paulson and Debo with a groin. Demario Davis with a hamstring. Pete Werner with a shoulder. Jalen Ford, unspecified. Rashid Shaheed with a hamstring. Equimania St. Brown with a hamstring. Bud Means with a shin. Kendra Miller with a hamstring. Nick Salivari with a calf. And Trajan Jeffcoat with an elbow. It's a long list. And... Here's the thing. I think most of them feel pretty minor. Mm -hmm. I I mean, we've heard some levels of optimism. DA said, for example, that Demario would probably play in a game this week. Um, He said Shahid was kind of precautionary. He said Adiba was kind of precautionary. All of those might be, you know, two weeks away from being fine. I don't think we're going to see any of those guys in the first preseason game, though. No. Um, At this point, unless they're all back on the field going strong a couple days from now. So, Definitely disappointing, especially how many times you said hamstring and groin. Like, weren't yeah. we supposed to avoid soft tissue injuries out here? I guess some things are just on. Unav- I I don't blame the Saints. I don't blame the medical staff. Like, 
it's just proof that there's there's no magic formula to say nobody's going to pull their hamstring in a training camp. Uh, one good news, though, on, on, on a missing guy, Jay Kaner posted on Instagram, quote, back to it. So sounds like things went well today with this procedure. Hey, and he'll be back that's to great. That's great to hear. Great to hear that everything is going great with Jake and that um, situation that's going on with him. But something that I noticed today in practice, they tried a lot of plays to the outside with Taysom Hill when he was running. And I'm like, Taysom is usually like a just a bowling ball going down the middle, not like a curve on the out. And I was like, that's where you're missing Rashid Shaheed. That's where you're missing that type of speed that can get around there and then jet up the field. So Taysom yeah. hasn't really gotten untracked yet. I like the creative uses of him, but I have I've met a ton of Taysom highlights. Taysom, he gets, he Taysom's gets stuffed a, a little bit. <laughs> Taysom's a contact guy, though. Like, yeah. Taysom, yeah. Okay. If okay. you aren't yeah. letting him, like, Taysom isn't, isn't dancing around anybody. Like, when he was a kickoff <laughs> returner, it was just a straight line. There was no wiggle. It was like yeah. he was getting going as fast as he could and running people over. Like, Taysom, I think we're going to see Taysom, like, when yeah. you're, when you're, okay. when he can okay. just okay. knock okay. people out. Yeah. Let a tank okay. do tank things. Okay. Don't yes. make it do Corvette yeah. moves. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, ah, I am know. disappointed, though, that, that, they used him in the Wildcat or whatever, you know, QB power twice, and he didn't get in the end zone either time yet. He would have ran someone he over. He would have ran someone over. Yeah. You got to. You got to say <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right now, he's he subdued. Also, they didn't let Colin problems. Saunders lead block for him. I mean, that's yeah. a missing yeah. piece, obviously. <laughs> Bink package. Of course, he'll love to hear that name be said again in this offense. But, yeah, he, he's throttled down right now. He doesn't. That's his own teammates. He doesn't want to, you know, put pain on anybody like that. But. It's all still physical out there, to say the least. Now it's time for the Martin's question of the day. Martin's is home to a wide selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and more. Martin's, so much more than just wine. Today's question comes from Taylor Babineau. They ask, what players will you bet on raising their stock the most in Arizona during the preseason game? Go th- yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, this game, I think, is super important for guys who need to prove it's real. Um, Anthony Orgy is one. Uh, Mason Tipton is one. Uh, Kyle Hergel is one. Spencer Rattler, to a degree, is one. The guys who have looked great and have clearly earned opportunities to move up with the ones or the twos, now it matters. If they if they don't do it in this setting, it kind of undermines the things we're seeing in practice for that level of guy. Like, Orgy is one absolutely that, like, Makes a splash play every day, but he needs to prove he can do it when the yeah. pads are on, not get undisciplined, not, you know, when he's playing 14 snaps in a row and things like that. Um, so, I mean, it's it's true of all these guys, DeMarco Jackson, Kalika Hudson, all the guys competing there, but it's the burst onto the scene guys that if they do what they've been doing in practice in a game, as Dennis Allen keeps saying, when the lights are on and everything like that, those are the guys who can be like, all right, these guys are legit. We're rolling with these guys. Who are you betting on, though? That's the question. <sighs> Out of those guys, uh, you you make your bet while I think about it. Uh, yeah, I'll take Hergel. I mean, I think yeah. I think I mean Manny. He took some reps with the first team today in the two on two pass rush, and he stonewalled Chase Young. He blocked Brian Brzee, Um, and there was somebody else in there too. And and, and he looked good. I think he's looked good throughout. Um, I, I think he'll be able to go in this game and hold his own a little bit. Uh, you know, I think some of these other guys might as well, I, you know, but I just kind of feel like I, I believe in his ability to to just baseline block better than I think maybe some of the the other people that are question marks. So I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw my money behind him to have a good game. All right, um, Christian Boyd's another one I'd put in that category. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. he's looked great in camp, but they haven't tackled anyone yet in camp. Show show that power where it matters most. He's a guy I think he'll do it. It's hard to bet against Mason Tipton. I mean, even after he got all the hype, his second week was just as good, if not better, than his first week. So I'll say he keeps doing it. Um, it the, the biggest cheat, cheating, I would say, is if they let Alante Taylor play in this game, I bet I bet we're coming away saying he killed it because he is just a level above these unproven guys right now. Like yeah. Linebacker, I'm going to bet on DeMarc. I, I like Orgy. I just wrote about Orgy earlier this week. I'm excited about him. But I bet I bet in the... Don't make any mistakes. I bet the veteranness of DeMarco Jackson. Pick your and champion, Kalika. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, take, I, take it down the one. I'm going to bet that DeMarco Jackson and Cleek Hudson outshine. No, I need, one. I need one. I need one. I just want one. Man. One champion. We all get one champion. Who's your guy? Oh, Who's you your guy? Kalik Hudson. That's you, okay. You okay. okay. Sixth. We're okay. going to talk like about it. him differently. After I like the game. that. I like that. Okay. All Mike right. is one yeah. of those. Oh man, you know this person won, but this person won second. Hey, we, this person won third. We, we this went person through forty won names yeah. when we went through the depth chart. I didn't know we were supposed to only pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your champ, Nick? I, I he already did picked Hurdle. Hurdle. You already got Hurdle. Yeah. Who's yours? 
Tipton. You're taking Tipton? Tipton? Yeah, I'll take Tipton. I think whoever's in there at quarterback can supply him with the ball. And I think he could make things happen. He has to make things happen. He's looked very well throughout these two weeks to where he doesn't need to regress. Oh, I have a new answer. What's that? I have a new answer. Come on, man. Who we're talking about after the preseason game, when you just said the quarterback, like when when the bullets are really flying and they're just trying to get quick passes off, Dallin Holker's going to have seven catches in this game. (laughs) Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice at all. Well, that'll do it for this episode of NewOrleans.Football. We hope you all subscribe to the website if you're not already subscribed. If you are already subscribed, stick around because overtime is up next. And look, it's Monday. We're feeling good. We have an off day tomorrow. But we're still... No off be, days for... No, no yeah. For. You, you know where I'm going. No off days for the NOF team. <laughs> so make sure you keep it locked to the website. Catch you next time.